All right, what's up, folks? We are streaming, and of course, uh, I always uh, take a moment when I start up my live streams to just make sure the settings look good, give folks a few minutes to uh, filter in before I just uh, launch right in. Uh, this is more for the benefit of people that are watching this once it's archived. But welcome to a Comic Tropes Art live stream. This is where I uh, either draw for fun, or in this case, it is a commission that I'm doing uh, to help a friend. And then I will. Um, I'm primarily inking. I've uh, I've got a request to do Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So today I've spent some time sketching uh, a pose based on a fairly iconic. Uh, sort of existing um, promotional image, but I've added like her axe and made some changes and I'm gonna basically be inking that. Hello to a bunch of people that have joined in. Penelope, hello J. Andrew World, Joseph Wheeler, Car Jab, and Retro Advance. Nice to see a bunch of folks here. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, just gonna give folks a couple moments to uh, filter in here at the beginning. And I'm just uh, messing around with some settings as well, so. Just, uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, let's see. Uh, how do you do anatomy? Uh, great question. Um, you know, mostly, uh, you know, I'm starting with a, a blank uh, piece of paper and um, uh, just uh, coming up with uh, something... Uh, a drawing and, a, and I'm using sort of blocky shapes. So uh, this will be small, but like say I was going to draw Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I'd, uh, and I'm coming up with sort of a pose here. You know, I'm sort of adding in um, like rectangles and squares to sort of like at first represent the, 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 the shape of the person and um, then sort of building it out from there. Um, But for this particular instance, um, I have to admit I was using uh, some reference. I was using a pretty famous um, pose um, to sort of meet the demands of uh, this particular request. Um, so anyway, I might just sort of do something like that where, you know, you can see that I'm using sort of basic shapes to uh, find the the, the, the form that I want to use and then I just start darkening as I um, get more confident that the, the shape is coming out the way that I want it to. Anyway, it's a, it's a cool question. Hopefully you can start to see, uh, oh, it's not zoomed in too much, but you know, that, that's just sort of me drawing like a character starting to take form. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, hello, San Sanity and Watchful and Harmonious subscriber. Um, everything's better with a top hat and monocle. Well, that's cool. A book on anatomy is a big help. One thing I like to do is um, go to uh, live drawing sessions every once in a while. Um, I like to uh, do things like uh, Dr. Sketches as a franchise that will often have events in your um, city, nearby town. Uh, so you can look that up. Um, but a, a lot of uh, towns will have just events. Just look for live drawing sessions. And, um, you know, that that's just... Uh, I like to do that every once in a while to sort of go back to basics, you might say. Go focus on um, just working on real life anatomy. I really like doing that. I also will sometimes do something like take a trip to uh, the park or the zoo and I'll bring a sketchbook with me and I'll just draw what I see. And then after a while, sometimes I feel that my work is becoming too stiff because I'm using reference so much. And that's when I just draw purely from my head so that I'm loosening things up. And right now I'm sort of doing a little bit of a mix because I'm sort of laying down some pencil sketches that are using reference and then I'm, but I'm trying to keep it fairly light and I'm trying to find the, the full drawing once I'm inking, like in loosening it up with um, with some inks. So that's some of my, my current uh, current uh, process. So anyway, did I watch Captain Marvel? Yeah, I watched it. Um, I watched that back when it came out. I, I, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was, I didn't think it was great, but I thought it was pretty good. You know what I need? Straight edge. I was about to ink 
this uh, Slayer Scythe. This is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's a request, and uh, I almost started just do it, doing it freehand, but I don't think that's absolutely the best idea, actually. Just taking a look at which pens I uh, have with me right now before I decide how I'm going to ink this, these lines. I could, you could visit a museum and draw a statue. That's, that's absolutely a great idea. That's a great suggestion. So I'm just going to do a couple of these straight lines before I can sort of get into the, the more fun stuff, you might say. Don't draw me pantsless, J. Andrew World. That's getting creepy. <laughs> Hello, Ohio. I'm from America. Hello from America. <laughs> I didn't even get that joke right. That's so lame. Uh, let's see. I enjoyed Captain Marvel as well. You should draw the Super Scroll sometime. That, that would be fun. That would be fun. Right now, um, I'm doing um, a round of uh, commissions to help a friend of mine who has a GoFundMe. Um, I volunteered to do a certain number. I'm happy to say they all sold. So this is um, an existing request, and so that's sort of my priority, just banging these out, uh, doing a good job. Not Maybe banging them out sounds like I'm uh, rushing it. But, um, you know, just trying to uh, take care of some requests, and then I can go back to sort of drawing whatever I want to draw. All right. So there we go with some of that. And since I've got this particular pen out, I'm just going to sort of keep doing a few lines that should be about the same width. And then I'm going to jump to a, a brush pen to work on sort of the outlines and areas where I want the line work to be a little thicker to sort of stand out from uh, anybody else. Hello from North Dakota. Hello from America. Uh, I have not played Dig Dug lately. Do you ink with brush as well? Um, I, I have one handy here, but do I use it much? Not really, to be honest. Um, I need a lot more practice. I do practice with it. I haven't live streamed a lot of that. Um, I just don't feel that I, I quite have a great grasp on, uh, on drawing with a brush yet. I think that the results are okay, but, um, yeah. Just sort of a little shy about uh, the the end result. If I go quiet at all, it's purely me concentrating on a particular line. And uh, I will look up momentarily, take some questions. I might be pausing here and there to... Uh, you know, really d dig in deep to uh, a, a particular question, but uh, yeah, just just noodling about and uh, happy to have the company. It's interesting, you know, drawing is uh, such a solitary experience most of the time. Uh, it's it's really nice to have uh, some company though. It's it's fun to draw with other people because then you know that you're not interrupting them any more than they're interrupting you. I also pr prefer to listen to. Um, uh, podcasts as compared to music that that's my personal preference i really enjoy listening to stuff like um both comedy podcasts and sometimes true crime uh just so that i've got like sort of talking voices it, it feels like you're sort of not alone but it's not it's not distracting i don't know i can just sort of absorb that pretty easily personally when i am um, when i'm drawing When I was in college, I used to um, I used to sort of doodle uh, on my uh, you know my my uh, not sketchbooks my um, my notebooks. I, I would I would be drawing, and sometimes you know a teacher would be like, "Hey hey, can you focus?" And I'm like, "I promise, I'm absorbing what you're saying, 
And it really is true. When I'm drawing, I can listen and I can absorb what's being said more so than if I just have to sit there and concentrate on the words. Um, I believe everybody primarily relies on one sense, and I think that mine is definitely visual. In fact, I think I am not great at listening to things. Um, so if I just try to listen to, say, music, I have trouble sometimes picking out individual instruments. I mean, it can sound beautiful to me, but I have trouble going like, oh, well, that's a piano and that's a guitar. I can sometimes have trouble with that. But if I'm listening to someone talking while I'm drawing, it associates what I'm hearing with a visual drawing and I'm able to absorb that information more easily. I don't know if that's uh, any kind of existing theory or if there's any uh, research on that, but I know for a fact that that's how my brain works. Peripheral concentration can be superior in some ways. I've never heard that phrase, peripheral concentration. That's interesting. Blade was probably one of the inspirations for Buffy. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I think that, like, uh, you know, Joss Whedon has talked about, like, his main inspiration for Buffy was simply that in horror movies, usually you, you might have a last survivor, but, you know, the girl is sort of like, you know, ordinary and plays like a victim role, and he just wanted to reverse that. It, 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 while there is definitely some superhero uh, inspiration in Buffy, I think that he was really just trying to turn the horror trope on its head. That's interesting, uh, Rabbit Chameleon, yeah. I watched a ton of Buffy when I was a kid. I loved that show. Um, I hadn't actually thought about it in a while. I was I was really glad to get this uh, request. But um, I was a big fan of uh, both Buffy and uh, uh, Angel. Especially by, like, maybe halfway through season two of Angel. It, it got significantly better um, for the rest of its run. And... Uh, Sometimes I miss it. Um, you know, they, they've been saying that there's going to be... It's a reboot, but it sounds like it actually might sort of still be in the same universe. Just set, you know, in modern day. I don't know. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I like that world. Um, there have been some good comics. I like uh, I like some of the Buffy comics. I, I like the first couple of seasons... That Dark Horse, uh, no, not Dark Horse. Was was it IDW? I'm trying to remember now. Who who collaborated with um, Joss Whedon? I guess it was Dark Horse. I think that they got the rights to both Buffy and Angel. Angel never really resolved the storyline from its last episode. I mean, yes and no. I think that that was sort of its statement was that thing. You know, the work never stops. There's never like necessarily. Um, one big victory for a hero, and then their work is done. It's like, if you're a police officer or a firefighter or something, it's not like you just solve a case and there's no more crime or no more problems to solve. You know, the, the work keeps going. I kind of like that. I, I, I kind of like that a lot, that it ended on um, a bit of an open-ended note. I had some mandatory English assignments about Buffy. Had to watch some episodes in depth. That's interesting. Sounds like you had a teacher that was a big fan. <laughs> Hello, Ellis Grieger and James Gleason. Hello, Jose. You met Tara from Buffy? Oh, that's cool. She did some writing, didn't she? Not necessarily for Buffy, but I believe that um, that actress, uh, I want to say Amber Benson might have been her name. I think she did um, some, some writing. Of course, one of the most successful people from that show is um, a guy that played the small supporting role of... Um, Oh, he was like, he played a nerd across a, a lot of seasons, and he was sort of one of the big bads in season six, and Danny Strong is the actor's name, and now he's a very successful writer-producer in his own right, as compared to just being an actor. Um, kind of interesting. He's probably, uh, he's, well, him and, uh, I guess, uh, Oh, um, I'm trying to think of the actress that played Willow because, of course, she also got to have uh, How I Met Your Mother, which went on for many seasons. So she she's very successful as well.
Jeremy Renner started in Angel. Oh, I remember Jeremy Renner in Angel. I think he was um was he the guy that was uh that Angel had to turn into a vampire back in like World War II in a submarine? I feel like that's where he, he was. Allison Hannigan, thank you. Fool Us 2. I don't know that show. I haven't heard of that one. Sorry. Anyway, yeah, that was definitely a show that I uh, really enjoyed when it was on uh, Buffy. I, I think seasons two and three are my favorite, but um, I like it a lot. I'm trying to do some pretty long smooth lines to um, keep the character somewhat delicate. You know, I don't want to have lots of short, scratchy lines on this. So trying to pull with my whole arm as compared to just like using your wrist. Um, it can be a little tricky because, you know, you're sort of covering up your own art. You have to just sort of know where you're going. But anyway, just sort of explaining what I'm what I'm doing. Hopefully that's interesting. What other things? Hello from Brazil. Oh, cool. Hello, Brazil. Is that where the name Darla comes from? Darla was a major character in this. Ben Affleck was in a scene where a basketball player turns into a vampire on the court. Affleck was one of the players. In the Buffy movie, is it? That sort of sounds familiar. Uh, reading Planetary, but planetary, but probably start reading Love and Rockets some more. Cool, cool. Good comics. The scythe lo looks way cooler in the comics, especially in Frey, than it does in the show. Yeah, that's true. That is one kind of cool thing, actually. Um, this scythe that Buffy has, she got that in the final season, season seven. But it actually had debuted before that in a comic that Joss Whedon wrote. Uh, it was called Frey, and it was about a vampire slayer way in the far future. It was a sci-fi story uh, set in the Bi Buffy universe. Um, and he introduced the scythe in the comics, and then they actually made it into a real prop later on the TV show. So that was actually really cool to um, sort of see a, um, a comic book acknowledged as being in continuity, especially back then where it would have been maybe like, I don't know, 2002 or something like that. I'm, I'm really just guessing on the year, but somewhere around there. It was, uh, as a fan, it was pretty, pretty exciting to sort of see that recognition. Like, yes, the, the comic exists. The comic is, is canon. I'll uh, check back in in just a moment, but I um, yeah, appreciate the support of everybody uh, showing up right now. That's that's really nice. Uh, the channel's doing overall, I think, pretty well. Um, I know I could definitely explode the viewership if I ever decided to just complain about mainstream comics like more often. Say this was the a bad storyline. This this stunk. And I do want to, like, you know, occasionally cover things that aren't good because I think we can learn from them. But I would just personally get bored if I was um, just uh, covering stuff that I didn't like. I, I like to jump around and show indie comics and foreign comics and old comics. And uh, I know that the audience for that is a little smaller, but obviously all of you here just sort of appreciate the medium of comics as an art form uh, compared to, like, you know, there are people that are like, no, no, you know, I only want to read Marvel and DC. And that's fine. That's just, there's a little more that I'm interested in comics and in covering. Uh, and it'll probably never explode the same way as if I just sort of ranted about 
the decisions in Batman or Spider-Man, or if I just sort of explained to you the latest crossover, like, this is what DC Metal was. Uh, that stuff does tremendously popular. You could make a living just doing that stuff. And I do respect it, but it's just not what interests me. What image format works best to send in pictures of the week? Um, either PNG or JPEG. And, uh, yeah, just either of those is fine. <clears throat> Let's see. I was thinking of downloading some of the free Buffy comics. School's kicking my butt right now, though. Well, I understand. Yeah, sometimes uh, work or school comes first or family. So it's just the way it is. But, uh, yeah, I really liked... Um, there was a uh, Angel and Faith comic um, by, I believe, Christos Gage... And who was the artist? Rebecca something that I'm not thinking of right now. Maybe somebody in the uh, in the room can help me or look that up. Um, but uh, that was a pretty good book. That, both art and writing. Um, the Angel and Faith comic book. Quite good. Please let DP Show be good. Oh, please. DP Show. DP Show. I don't know what DP Show. It's not coming to me. Please, Chris, tell us your, your thoughts on the creation of Hulk Vereen was a horrible idea. I can't. I, I think my friend uh, Tony Moore just did like a cover or an issue of it. So I, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to piss on something that like, you know, a friend is working on. Mario uh, says, could I do more video essays on artists like Bernie Wrightson? I, I promise I will. Um, I mean... The next video is basically uh, about a particular writer artist, and I've got plenty more of those lined up. Uh, there's a lot of amazing artists whose work I uh, respect and admire, and I'll definitely be giving them whatever analysis I can. But um, thank you. I'm glad that you liked the uh, Bernie Wrightson episode. I, I, I like that one too. Um, it's always also fun to do like a video about an artist that's um, respected, but n not necessarily in the limelight anymore. So um, that always uh, is fun for me. I recently bought The Walking Dead number one, and I thought it would be like the show. Well, in a lot of ways it is, but in a lot of ways they uh, try to make things different so that, like, the readers who'd been reading it for a couple years are uh, surprised. I love uh, The Walking Dead comic. I, I like it more than the show, personally. Um, and I especially love the early issues. Is there an artist creator that you want to revisit in a Comic Tropes video? That's a that's a really uh, good question, uh, uh, L.S. Grieger. Um, a lot, to be honest. Uh, and that's just sort of countered with the fact that there's so many wonderful artists out there that I'd love to talk about. Um, I would like to do um, a more in-depth video on... Um, Bill Sienkiewicz, who I talked about some in an episode about Legion. Uh, even though I've mentioned uh, Chris Claremont several times, I, I would actually like to analyze his work a little bit more. Um, trying to think of like just artists, though. Um, uh, John Byrne, uh, Mike Mignola. Mike Mignola, I've, I've got plenty to say about how much I love his work and why. What works for me with his choices. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's tough, honestly, um, doing the show because um, I, I would, I've got more to say about almost every topic that I create. And I just have to say, well, this is a reasonable amount to cover for now. And I've got to move on because uh, otherwise I'll never get anything done. And um, I hope I can revisit some of them. But there's also so many creators out there that I haven't covered yet that I love. Uh, so anyway, what's my favorite indie comic? Um, 
when I was a kid, it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and The Tick. Um, uh, as I got older, let's say indie comics that I loved are like uh, Blankets by Craig Thompson, um, uh, Bone by Jeff Smith, um, Stray Bullets by David Laugham. So anyway, those are some. Hello, Son of a Red Shirt and Cuidado, Smithy Owain. Oh, I answered your question. Any tips for improving art? Basically, just keep going. Keep, keep just draw, 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 draw. Like, whenever I draw regularly, I get better. When I have to take breaks, um, I uh, I lose a step. It's just how it is. It's like everything. Practice, you know? And then you'll see the areas where you need to improve, whether that's uh, in figure drawing from real life or if it's in panel-to-panel -panel storytelling and finding ways to choose clear and compelling shots. Or if it's something else. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different areas that uh, can always use assistance in. One of my cats keeps meowing. He wants to come in. He just wants attention. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Gru the Wanderer was awesome. Awesome. A couple people mentioning Gru. I love Gru. I don't remember if you've ever covered Gru. I have covered Gru. Yep, I definitely covered him. Um, and people are saying do blankets and Bill Sienkiewicz. I will. Is it normal for a dog to snore while sleeping? My dog is snoring right now. It's totally normal. Super normal, actually. Depending especially on the breed. But uh, uh, yeah, a lot of them have uh, snoring issues. That That's 1,000% normal. All right, I've been sort of avoiding uh, the face because that's that's the area where it's easiest to uh, screw things up. But let's uh, start laying in some details there. In fact, excuse me, I sort of hiccuped. I'm going to zoom in. So let's uh, let's see what we can learn, right? And uh, someday I'll have to get a camera that focuses a little better. I feel like it just, I can't quite focus it quite where I, the, the, to the resolution that I want to. Milo. These lips are going to look weird for a moment while I'm sort of adding a certain amount of shading to them. Any questions? Let's see. Whatever happened to the Buffy cartoon show? Didn't get picked up. Can't believe it didn't. Animation was incredible uh, in their like little uh, pilot that they made. Had all the voice actors except for Sarah Michelle Gellar. 
Uh, but they got a sound alike for her, who was very, very good. Um, pretty sure it's the same one that did the voices in the uh, video games. Um, same writers, same. Yeah, that was that's a that's a big miss in my opinion. Can't believe uh, there wasn't a network that that didn't pick it up. I tell you, in today's day and age, with all the uh, streaming options, it definitely would have gotten picked up. But too late now. I'm sure that uh, if you haven't seen it, like, uh, look on YouTube sometime. There's like a five-minute um, thing. Oh, cool, a uh, super chat. Thank you, Ryan. Our family loves watching comic tropes. Wow, that's really cool to hear. Thank you so much. Wow. My stream is far too choppy. I'm definitely not able to see this live as a result. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, my signal strength seems uh, pretty strong. Um, this particular camera that has me always is a little choppy because it's just sort of a, a pretty basic camera. But this should be pretty pretty smooth. Um, if it isn't, I'm, I'm really sorry. But I don't think that there's anything I can do on my end to uh, improve that. I, I'm showing, like, you know, no real lag or anything. Hello, Sly Fly Guy. <clears throat> uh, I've been watching some of your past videos. I've been very much enjoying them all. I really like the Umbrella Academy, and I'm curious, have you seen the television show yet? I've seen eight of the ten episodes. I still need to catch two more. Uh, only reason I haven't is is time. Uh, very, very busy. Very busy. But um, I want to see them. Uh, it's it's an interesting take. It's, it's definitely a little different than the... Uh, I mean, the themes are the same. The characters are pretty much the same, but... Uh, yeah, they definitely go in some different directions there. Just outlining some of the strands of hair that uh, sort of uh, show the form that I want, and then a lot of them will be a, a lot smaller than this. I saw your tweet about Carl Barks. Do you have a plan to do a video about Donald Duck comics eventually? Absolutely, at some point I will. Uh, Carl Barks is a really important uh, artist in comics, so definitely at some point I will be uh, discussing his contributions and his, uh, his work, his techniques, what he did for comics. Not quite in the super immediate future, but I ideally, like, you know, this year, that's my goal. So we're getting there. We're starting to form a little bit more of uh, what we need to. Uh, I've seen us. Um, I, I thought it was quite good. Um, yeah. Um, between us and Get Out, I preferred Get Out. I think that that was just a, a little uh, better um, written structurally, but uh, us was definitely uh, interesting and uh, had some effective tension. Yeah, I would definitely recommend seeing it.
if nothing else, it'll introduce you to a pretty dope song from 1995 called Five On It by uh, Lunas, who was a pretty uh, cool uh, rap duo back in 95. And uh, that song gets uh, a lot of play in the movie. I don't know if my version exactly looks like uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, but hopefully it's still sort of identifiable as Buffy. Um, we'll see. Your mileage may vary. Sandman is a dope comic. Yep, Sandman. I've talked about Neil Gaiman, but when I covered, um, uh, um, what was it, 14... 06, whatever that Marvel comic he did was. I covered him in that because I wanted to do something a little different. But um, uh, at some point I'll talk about his work on Sandman as well. It's just that that's definitely been covered a lot more. So, you know, I didn't think it was as much of a priority to, to have my opinions on it just because they're not going to be radically different than a lot of other uh, observations out there. Yeah, Constantine is a regular uh, this past season on Legends of Tomorrow, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what else? When you have less things on your plate, I would love for you to make a Carmine Infantino episode. I will. Um, I will. He, he did some really fantastic work uh, on The Flash uh, in, in the Silver Age. So, so, you know, he's got an important uh, role in comics for that alone. Um, I don't think, uh, as an editor, he was very progressive. Um, I think he stifled some creativity by, um, some of his, uh, writers and artists, but, um, not to say he was bad at it, just that he's, he, he blocked some ideas that I think were worth exploring. Oh, did anybody go to uh, the midnight release of Detective Comics 1000 last night? Like, did your local comic shop even offer something like that? Mine mine did, and I like to just sort of go to events like that just to sort of see who turns up and what kind of significance there is in like a local level to um, a book like that. I think that that's quite an amazing accomplishment when you think about it. Like, a uh, thousand issues. Pretty awesome. I'm sure no one ever uh, had that in mind when, when it first debuted. My LCS is three hours away. Oh, that's quite a that's quite a drive. How was the Midnight Detective Comics party? It was it was pretty good. Um, my comic shop had um, a guy dressed uh, in a perfect Batman costume from the nineteen eighty nine Batman movie. So that was awesome. Uh, just a great costume. No like gross wear or tear. Just like very accurate. So that was impressive. And uh, they had, like, you know, fun things like uh, Batman-themed cupcakes and uh, little giveaways of, like, sort of, uh, you know, just Batman tchotchkes, like pencils and masks and snap bracelets. Uh, that was definitely fun. And then they had, like, tons of different covers because I guess DC released lots of different options. Uh, and one of them was specific to the midnight release. Uh, there were less of those. And... I just decided that was the one that I liked uh, 
they, they, it was a tough call actually because they've got a lot of great Batman artists in there like you know Frank Miller and Tim Sale and uh, uh, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini um, I, I don't know they, they had a lot of cool options I think there was a Storanko version that'll be somebody interesting to talk about at some point That is a that is an interesting character, man. Alita was another victim of the live-action anime movie curse. Yeah, I didn't say it. Uh, this is uh, fun. Um, after this, I have a bunch more commissions. Um, I have to draw Ayn from Cowboy Bebop. I believe... Uh, well, the main character from the comic Local... Uh, which I, I want to say her name is Rebecca, but I have to double check because it's been a long time since I uh, read any of that. Um, I have to draw something Batman related for one person. He gave me a bunch of different options, so I haven't decided there which one it's going to be yet. But he's got a few things that he would like. Um, I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to forget. Yeah, I'm trying to forget the others. Um, no, I'm trying to remember. Uh, the other requests, but uh, it's not coming to me right now. Um, but uh, I've got a bunch of requests, so I might be doing some more live streams uh, soon. I might, I might, if I can, I'm gonna do another one tomorrow. Um, we'll see. Um, I'd like to, but it all depends on uh, how much I've got to do. Like aside from this. Still working on the episode that'll come out this Sunday. Uh, and just making sure that I don't like sort of get... I don't think I need to go into work. I mean, today and tomorrow are supposed to be my days off, but we'll see. We'll see. Oh, thanks, Mandela Butterfly. That's that's really appreciated. Feeling sick? Your streams put me in a good mood. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling sick. Uh, I was talking to my sister today. She's also not feeling well, and uh, I hope you feel better. It's never... It's always tough being sick. It's always tough, to, especially depending on exactly what it is. But uh, I, I just hope uh, that you feel better soon. Thank you so much for the super chat. Stuff like that's really appreciated. Um... Yeah, just very generous of you. Thank you. Ever since uh, somebody mentioned us and I mentioned the uh, song Five on it, I've got that in my head big time right now. I got five on it. <laughs> Can't sing too much or uh, YouTube will demonetize the video. And uh, I need all the help I can get these days. So that's the only, that's enough humming from me. <laughs> all right, time to uh, break out the needed eraser for a minute. Hello, Clay. Say, do I have a favorite character in comics or in a video game that hasn't been brought to film but deserves to be? Hmm. Boy, I feel like I'm uh, nearly spoiled these days in terms of how many uh, characters that I like have been adapted into film. So that's sort of a that's sort of a tough uh, thing to think of off the top of my head. Who do I want to still be adapted into film that hasn't been? Um. Well. Personally, I guess I will say that um, I, I really do like uh, the character of Daredevil. There have been a lot of awesome Daredevil stories, and um, I did like the Netflix adaptation quite a bit. It was a very solid adaptation. Uh, I, I would love to see that uh, put back into film um, closer to like what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is doing now as compared to 
that version uh, in like the early 2000s or whatever with Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner, which, you know, was okay for its time, but really doesn't hold up that well in most areas. The guy didn't even, like, really have a cowl in that. He mostly wore a hat. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. He is, uh, could use some work. The needed erase is a needed. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, am I ever going to cover the James Robinson Starman run? I, I've definitely gotten some requests for that, Ellis Grieger. Uh, especially one of my close friends, Jeff, really wants me to do it. So at some point, I, I definitely will. Thoughts on Craig Thompson's art in blankets. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Really meant a lot to me. Uh, I just uh, definitely felt that book. You know, like the just so, just so uh, engaging and emotional. And even if you didn't go through exactly what he went through, everybody sort of had uh, that sort of first relationship where they like just fall head over heels in love, and and it just like changes how you view everything. And um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I love to do that. I. I um, I used to buy copies of blankets for like almost everybody I knew because I was like, this is a good intro into comics for people that only think of superheroes. I gave away a lot of copies of that book. I met Craig Thompson at a couple conventions and told him how much I liked it. I like a lot of his work. Carnet de, Vo Carnet de Voyage was also a, a beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, Goodbye Chunky Rice made me cry. Um, what else? Um... You know, I I've I haven't finished uh, Habibi. Uh, that is uh, that is an emotionally draining book that he's created the, on that one. That one's a little tough for me to get through, but uh, someday, someday. Just got quiet because I'm uh, just focusing on a couple uh, little details here. Be right back with everybody. Uh, Jonathan, if you, if I ever cover Jonathan Hickman, will I use flow charts? Well. I might have to, right? He's uh, some pretty complex writing. It depends on what I cover for him, you know? Um, that's a guy that really can map out um, some long-term epic stuff. Uh, his planning process is uh, very, must be very interesting. I don't think I know a whole lot about exactly how he uh, plans everything that he does, but uh, I like the results. I I came to Hickman kind of late. You know, he'd been getting a lot of attention for what he'd done on Fantastic Four and then on um, Avengers. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I need to check it out. And I was only checking it out right when, like, his Secret War uh, run uh, started. And, and I read all of his Avengers run and I was like, wow, I, I personally really like what he did there. Um, and I like uh, East of West. I think that that's a really cool comic. So, yeah, there's a lot uh, that he's done that I would love to talk about at some point. Interesting writer. Um, and I guess he's coming back to Marvel. And that is good because Marvel has a few good writers right now. I know they they, they love Donny Cates. Uh, and, and I don't know too much about Donny Cates yet. I'm, I'm a little behind there. But um, they could use some good writers just because they, they lost, uh, like, you know, like, Remender and Hickman and Brubaker, they lost them like all around the same time. And those guys were all like some of their best, you know, so they, they need they need their uh, they need some big guns again. Buffy was a huge head for them. You'd think they'd show a little more respect. I'm starting to see a bunch more trailers for Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. I definitely want to watch. I want to watch, too. I want to watch, too. Um. I already liked uh, 
I really like actually Star Trek Discovery. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I like it a lot. And uh, so I've already been thinking about um, getting CBS All Access so that I could see season two because I've only seen season one. Um, but if they've now got a Twilight Zone on top of that, that's even harder to say no to. If they came up with like one more show that I wanted to see on streaming, It'd almost be a definite, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Well, almost done with this guy um, for what I'm going to do on, on this. Uh, but I had fun with this. I like uh, This was fun to go back to a character that really meant a lot to me at one point. Any uh, questions that I've missed, folks? Hit me up. So I might I might be about to wrap up. Did you see the DC Universe streaming service is now airing the first episode of their original shows for free? I didn't. That's interesting. I'd be curious to see uh, both Titans and uh, uh, Doom Patrol, see what they did with each of those. Uh, Doom Patrol looked especially interesting. Titans, maybe not so much, but who knows? I haven't seen it, so... Can't can't really judge until you've seen it. Yeah, needed eraser is the way to go. Not gonna smudge your lines, just gonna clean everything up on you. Oh yeah, that's good. So let me zoom back out. Do the bats for the background. Uh, will I do a comic tropes for Buffy? Maybe someday. You know what I would be more likely to do? Is a comic tropes on um, Joss Whedon. Look at his writing style for comics. Because, I mean, he did his run on Astonishing X-Men. And he did Runaways. Mm, didn't really care for his work on Runaways. I didn't think his X-Men run was bad. And then he did some stuff for Buffy. It was pretty cool. Uh, hello, Janice Price. Let's see. Um, anyone watch the Shazam reruns from the 70s? I saw some of them back when I was a kid, but I don't remember it super well anymore. But I definitely remember that. Um, thanks, JMU's. That's really nice. That's really kind of you. Have you ever thought of making your own comics? I, I have. I have made some of my own comics. Um, I don't think that anything I've created is, uh, as self-published stuff is available these days. But you can find my work in the uh, books Trickster and Colonial Comics Volume 1 and 2. All of those are big, thick anthologies written by um, historians or Native American tribe members. And uh, I did a, one story for each of those three volumes. And then I'd done a lot of self-published stuff, but that was honestly back around like the uh, 2003 to 2010 time frame. Haven't really done that. I'd love to do a comic tropes on Tomb of Dracula, for sure. There's, um, I have talked about uh, that writer some, but um, I would like to do that. Maybe I'd focus on the artist. Give the second season of Chance, I meant to say. Give the second season a chance? Oh, I don't know what second season. Sec uh, anyway, 
um, yeah, these are some good, uh, good, good suggestions. Um, yeah, and th this didn't come out too bad. Hopefully the, uh, person that made the request likes it. Um, I'm probably going to add some color to it at some point. Let me get this sketch pad piece out of the way. And, um, just to show you, like, uh, so I'm doing some commissions right now just to recap, um, to help a friend's GoFundMe. And, uh, I've done Star-Lord... This character, Naruto, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I haven't actually seen this. And uh, Captain Marvel. So I'm still going to color these in, but uh, just working through some commissions right now. And, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Um, like I say, coming up, I've got to do Ein from Cowboy Bebop, some sort of Batman thing, some character from local, so that's three. There were ten. Let's see. So and there and I've done one, two, three, four. So there's three that I'm not thinking of. Anyway, I thought I watched a video where you were enjoying the Runaways comics. Did it take a turn after? Um, sort of. Uh, there have been several people that have had uh, Runaways runs, and uh, the creator uh, Brian K. Vaughn, I'm a huge fan of. That's somebody that um, I, I talk about in. Uh, the Runaways, uh, but I would love to cover Why the Last Man um, and or Saga, one or the other. Very important to me. Uh, love that. Love that writer. Um, anyway, I loved his work on Runaways. Um, eventually, Joss Whedon took over and did a uh, short run on Runaways. And uh, I'm not going to say that it's like you know disastrously bad. There's nothing offensively bad about it. I just don't think he quite did anything that made them feel like this it wasn't quite the same themes you know like runaways is about a bunch of teenagers that are runaways and and, and they feel very much on their own and uh his one involved like some time travel and i think the punisher even made an appearance if i'm remembering right and uh it wasn't bad but it just didn't quite feel like uh what it had been and um I think he was just trying to expand it and add some new stuff, but thematically, I didn't think it worked that well. But it's also, I haven't read it in a while, so it's hard to give a very specific criticism. I just remember sort of feeling like, eh, I've liked a lot of Joss Whedon's work. This one, I could take it or leave it. Honestly, that's probably too nice for what I thought, but yeah. Um... In the television show Archer, the spy organization they worked for was called ISIS because of real life events. They they had to change it. Yep, I know. Well, they didn't in change the spy stuff to private eye stuff because of real life events. They just changed the name of ISIS. They, they always had ideas to do other types of stories with it eventually. A video for Sergi Topi. Um, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. I, I have to admit, Mario, I hadn't necessarily considered that, but that's not a bad idea. That's a great artist. Um, I'd have to do some research. Wouldn't be in the uh, immediate future, but that's a good idea that I'll definitely remember. No, J. Andrew World, I did not realize that Carmen Infantino even had a nephew, let alone that he had a band that did a song about uh, The Flash. That's kind of cool. So, I think any other sort of lines I'd be adding at this point would just sort of be overkill, but um, it's it's hard to sort of like, I want to sort of keep doing the hair, but if I do too many lines for the texture of the hair, it stops looking blonde, you know? It, it Like, you can do some texture, but I, I, I even though I want to sort of keep doing more and, and turn it into thick, chunky strands... Um, uh, I could ruin it right now. Imagine an MCU movie co-starring Hawkeye with Taskmaster as the antagonist. Yeah, good idea. Scarlet Witch is the lead? Maybe. Scarlet Witch is getting her own uh, TV show. Disney Plus is going to have a uh, Loki TV show and a Scarlet Witch TV show with the uh, the movie actors. Oh, you meant Black Widow. Well, Black Widow is getting her own movie and I uh, don't think Hawkeye's in it. I'm pretty sure they'll use the um, the second Black Widow as the um, antagonist. I'm trying to remember her name. It's not coming to me right now, but there's another Black Widow that goes through some very weird shit. Does anyone remember the Thing cartoon that aired with the Flintstones? I do. Yeah, he was just a kid that would go, Thing ring, do your thing, and he'd turn into the Thing. There was no Fantastic Four. It was very weird. 
your Buffy came out great. Well, thank you. It's going to be somebody else's Buffy, but I'm, I'm, that's really kind of you. I just tried to uh, get like the, the pose and the hair and the eyes right. So we'll see. Um, all right, folks, I think I'm going to take off. Um, I know this is a little shorter than, than some episodes that I do, but uh, um, I, I'll, I'll be doing, I'll probably do one tomorrow. Um, so uh, I appreciate uh, everybody tuning in. And uh, don't worry, I've got a cool episode in the works for this uh, weekend. And um, I'm trying, if possible, to do some extra content for my Patreon supporters. Uh, so uh, very busy, but I got some really cool stuff in the works. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting where, well, you, you guys are part of the show. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't be a show without subscribers. So I do mean we. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, cross 50,000 real soon. Um, I haven't actually checked in a couple days to the, see the subscription count. I bet we're even closer than last time. I, I'm going to look it up right now, like live. Let's see. As of right now, I've got 47,461. So just a little, like 2,500 and change. And that's, that's really... Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of subscribers, that, that difference. But I also think that that's something there's no question I'll cross within April. So that's kind of exciting. That's kind of exciting. Um, you know, it might just uh, stay sort of progressing at the same rate that it does now. But I also feel like there's a small chance that, like, uh, you know, you hit 50,000 and maybe the algorithm start suggesting and recommending you to more people because there's plenty of comics readers out there that don't know about my show so um fingers crossed you know fingers crossed all right um so i'm gonna take off now but uh i sincerely appreciate everybody tuning in until i see you next time keep reading comics take care